The News 4 Rundown is sponsored by FH Fur. As we track more and more violent crimes in our area, we're focusing on a key piece of evidence for investigators. The I-Team shows us how courts are taking a harder look at what's been called the fingerprint of a gun and how it could change how we prosecute these crimes. July brought chaos for many first responders as they dealt with house fires caused by illegal fireworks like these ones. Coming up on News 4, the safety message they say everyone needs to hear. Then changing your commute, the new study that reveals why it might be time to turn in your car and the incentives being offered for you to do that. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast streaming for you. I'm Leon Harris on this Wednesday, July 5th, and we're going to begin with a look at some of the top stories we're following. A man has died after being shot on the campus of Catholic University. The victim is Maxwell Emerson from Kentucky. D.C. police tell us that Emerson was found suffering from a gunshot wound around 820 this morning along Alumni Lane, right by the Basilica. Police say they don't believe that he's connected with the university in any way. The university says the victim and the suspect knew one another, but this was not the only act of violence across D.C. this week. There have been 10 murders in the district since Friday, with five of them happening in just the last 24 hours. Mayor Bowser deployed 28 GO teams across the district to prevent violence, but two of the murders that happened yesterday occurred near those GO teams. Traffic picked up after a deadly crash caused massive backups on I-95 early this morning. Two people were killed in a crash in the northbound lanes in Stafford County. We're told a tractor trailer and two vehicles were involved. There was a truly disturbing amount of gun violence over the long holiday weekend. At every one of those mass shootings and the smaller ones in our area, crime scene investigators look for shell casings, the part of the bullet that usually gets kicked out on the ground when a gun fires. For years, we've heard crime scene investigators and detectives tell us about matching up bullets to guns to solve crimes. But now a Maryland Supreme Court ruling questions how reliable the science is on that and how it can be used in criminal trials. The I-Team and investigative reporter Ted Oberg found out that this could have an impact well beyond Maryland's courtrooms. After violence erupts and a gun fires, officers search crime scenes for bullet casings. They ship them off to a lab where technicians microscopically inspect them, looking for evidence the casing could be linked to a weapon and ultimately to a shooter. This specific type of testimony, this type of this piece of ammunition was fired by this specific gun, this is absolutely routine. As a former public defender, University of Maryland professor Mainka Sinha says she's seen too many cases where a forensics expert has declared a specific casing came from a specific gun. Now, Maryland's highest court has put limits on that kind of testimony. They can still say that like there's a there's a there's some pool of weapons which could have fired this and this gun that was recovered on the scene is within that pool. But they can't go farther than that to say it was this gun because the science doesn't support that. A drastic change and according to her, a pretty big deal, not just for shootings and criminal cases in the future, but many in the past as well. I can tell you that we have a case uh, that was getting ready for sentencing uh, and they postponed sentencing this week so that they could pull the transcript and see exactly what the expert said. Baltimore County State's Attorney Scott Schoenberger told the I-Team the issue is whether firearms experts have told jurors a bullet matched a gun. Testimony he admits in the past jurors would lean in to hear. Now Schoenberger is telling his team of prosecutors to look at current and past cases. We will be pulling cases, checking transcripts, and seeing uh, if uh, that testimony had been given uh, on other cases. There could be a lot of them. This technology is used by police departments all over the country and has been for years. One of many pieces of evidence law enforcement relies on for prosecution. You never know if that shell casing is going to be the shell casing that closes one of your violent crimes. That was DC's police chief back in 2018 telling the I-Team about this kind of analysis. 
reached this week in Prince William County, where Peter Newsham is now chief. He tells the I-team he hasn't reviewed the Maryland decision, but still believes, as with most forensic evidence, firearms testing can serve as an investigative lead that needs to be corroborated. Schellenberger advises fellow prosecutors across the country to pay attention to Maryland's ruling. It could happen in their state and therefore impacts the ones that they're trying this week and next week, and they may not know it for a couple of years. This is a step. This is really a step in the right direction towards sort of uncovering those flaws and bringing them to the public's attention and making sure that convictions are based on reliable evidence. The 4th of July holiday brought chaos for many local first responders who had to deal with house fires caused by personal fireworks. The D.C. Fire Department says it got tripled the amount of calls that it normally does. And in Montgomery County, one family accidentally set their home on fire and caused over a million dollars in damage. News 4's Amy Cho now with more on the safety message that firefighters want everyone to hear. Well, here in Montgomery County, all fireworks are illegal, but the fire department says that did not stop a lot of people from trying to use them anyways. These are just some of the many fireworks the Montgomery County Fire Department seized over the past few weeks. It is frustrating for us. We, we spent our careers trying to um, not only respond to these events, but to prevent injury, prevent fires. Last night was a hectic one for fire departments all around the D.C. area, with two house fires popping up in Fairfax County and more fires in Montgomery, D.C. and Prince George's County. The Montgomery County fire happened at this house on Rosecroft Road in Rockville. The fire department says a bag of used fireworks sparked the flames, causing over a million dollars in damage and leaving a family of three without a home. They attempted to douse the fireworks, put them in a trash bag, sit them by the house, uh, but they were still hot and they, and they started a fire. Over in D.C., the fire department says their job in Congress Heights was extra tough last night because someone's car was blocking the fire hydrant. And just last week, homemade fireworks caused an explosion at a house on Cervantes Avenue in Darnstown with members of the bomb squad having to come investigate. It's pretty shocking. Uh, it's a big deal that it's on our street. I was telling them that it's, it's, a, it's a really quiet street. Um, nothing happens here. If you want to see fireworks, you really need to go see a professional fireworks show. Words of warning they hope everyone hears as another July 4th fire season comes to a close. Amy Cho, News 4. Now more details on the house fires in Virginia that Amy mentioned. Here's an image from a fire in Stafford County. This is on Smelters Trace Road. The fire marshal there says it, it was caused by improperly discarded fireworks. The flames damaged three homes there, but fortunately no one was hurt. Meanwhile, over in Fairfax County, the fire department tweeted just after midnight it was actively responding to a dozen fires, and that includes two house fires in Fair Oaks and Herndon. Those are the pictures that you're looking at right now here. Investigators still working to determine the cause of all these fires. However, Fairfax County Fire tweeted that we cannot stress enough the importance of properly disposing of fireworks. Now, do you own a car? Maybe two? Well, you may not need any of them if you live in D.C. That's because a new study found that the district is one of the easiest places to get around in the country without a car. News 4 Transportation reporter Adam Tuss spoke with commuters around the region to see if that is really true. Do you ever need a car ever again? Think about that. This new study says that Washington, D.C. is one of the best places to not have a car. That's because we have plenty of other ways to get around. Things like Capital Bike Share. Of course, we have Metro. We have scooters. So do you believe it? No car, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, without a car here and uh, enjoying it so far. Pretty easy to get around. The group Coworking Cafe ranks D.C. as the fourth best city to live without a car. Alexandria also on this list as the 14th best place to live without a car, and Arlington is 16th. Now, this study does have a bit of an agenda since Coworking Cafe identifies cities where commuters can get to shared office spaces easily without the need for a car. I don't have a car. Sonia Zhu, who exclusively uses Capital Bike Share and Metro. I think D.C. is small enough that you don't really need a car to get around. It's not like California where you definitely need a car. For years, D.C. has promoted other types of transportation besides cars, and the city is saying that will be even more necessary as the district looks to turn a corner from the pandemic. 
It's great when we see people walking around, and the more people walk around, the more retail stores we're going to have. And the more people walking around, the more restaurants we'll have. And the more restaurants and the more retail, then we'll have even more people. In Alexandria, new developments now have to pay into a fund that helps promote other forms of transportation besides a car. In Arlington, there's even social media that promotes a car-free diet, educating people how to get around without a car. I heard you uh, have to pay a bunch of fees here in D.C. too for a car too. And oh yeah, and the red light cameras and the speed cameras. Absolutely, yeah. No, I don't want to deal with that. In case you're wondering, the top three cities on this list ahead of D.C., Boston number one, Newark, New Jersey number two, and New York City number three. In the district, Adam Tuss, News 4. Those traffic cameras alone could be reason enough. A formal lab testing of some white powder found in a highly trafficked area of the White House has been confirmed as cocaine. Preliminary tests indicated the white powder discovered in a small Ziploc bag on Sunday was cocaine. Law enforcement officials say it was found near a location where visitors are asked to leave behind their cell phones before touring the building. The discovery prompted a brief evacuation of the White House. The Secret Service is now reviewing visitor logs and surveillance cameras to determine who brought the cocaine into the executive mansion. Turning now to Decision 2023. Today, Virginia certified the results of last month's primary elections, and there will be a recount, it turns out, in the district that covers most of Prince William and Stafford counties. The candidates for the Republican District 29 Senate seat are separated by just two votes. Maria Martin is behind Nikki Rattray Baldwin. Martin tells News 4 that her campaign plans to ask for a recount this week. Under the Commonwealth's code, a candidate has 10 days after the certification date to apply for a recount. A potential seismic social media shift could be coming as more people are flipping the bird, so to speak, and leaving Twitter. Two rival apps now getting closer to entering the ring, and one of those apps is launching this week. So we want to start with Facebook. Parent company Meta, which plans to launch Instagram threads tomorrow. Meta describes threads as a text-based conversation app that allows users to discuss everything from interest to the latest trending topics. Early screenshots show, show some similarities with Twitter, you see here. But some folks have voiced privacy concerns about this platform. Threads can reportedly obtain everything there is to know about you, including your financial info, your health data, and other sensitive info. And then there's an app called Spill, created by ex-Twitter employees. Spill has a live news feed, like a lot of other platforms, but the founders say that this one's meant to be more visual, with easy ways to post text over photos and videos and GIFs. Instead of tweeting, users spill, as in spill the tea. The Spill app is already available, and it's a shot to the top of the Apple App Store this weekend. After Elon Musk announced some controversial changes he must impose on Twitter, the platform introduced some post limits. Musk called this move necessary to tackle data scraping and manipulation. These limits now restrict non-verified users to viewing 1,000 posts per day. Verified accounts, uh, which have to pay $8 a month for that privilege, can view 10,000 posts a day. Twitter also limiting the use of TweetDeck to just the verified users. Here's a verified star. This local track star heading off to Oregon to race for his shot at another national title. 15-year-old Quincy Wilson is a rising sophomore at Bullis. He's already making a name for himself in the world of field, track and field. This year, he won the indoor national championship in the 400 meters. But that's not all. He also holds the world record for his age group in the three, four, five, and 600 meter indoor races. On Friday, Quincy will compete at the USA Track and Field Under 20 Outdoor Championships out in Oregon. We'll be watching to see what happens and we'll let you know. Way to go and good luck, Quincy. All right, it's summer, pool season is here. Coming up, the steps that every parent can take to make sure their little ones are safe in the water from swim lessons to flotation devices and everything in between. Coming up, looking to book a vacation? Consumer Reports surveyed thousands of its members about their experiences. Now, Susan Hogan is reviewing the best and worst rated airlines to help you avoid those summer travel woes. Next on News 4. 
Whether you need electrical, plumbing, or HVAC service, FH First expert technicians have you covered. Now, during our Super Summer Comfort event, schedule any of FH First award-winning services and score $75 off. That's an astonishing $75 off any electrical, plumbing, or HVAC service now only during FH First Super Summer Comfort event. From flickering lights, pesky leaks, to keeping you cool during the sweltering summer heat, you know who to call. 877-COFFER-FHFER.COM Travel day for air travelers heading home from the July 4th weekend. We're taking here a live look at Reagan National Airport. The Transportation Security Administration set a record for the number of people screened at airports across the country last week. The TSA says nearly 3 million people moved through checkpoints nationwide, topping the previous record set during the Sunday after Thanksgiving back in 2019. The record comes after passengers dealt with delays and cancellations leading up to the holiday weekend because of severe weather and other issues. In Arizona, where we came from, at the time that we had left, it wasn't as bad, but when we got here to D.C., it was crowded. Oh, feeling good. The traffic has not been bad this early this morning anyway. We'll, we'll see what happens when we go through TSA, though. You may be surprised to learn that TSA data shows that the day after the 4th of July has been consistently a light travel day. Typically, flights are cheaper and airports are less congested as people spread out their return home. With so many things about airline travel out of our control, from weather to staffing issues to lost baggage, does choosing the right airline really make a difference? Consumer reporter Susan Hogan reveals the latest travel survey to help you make the right choice when you book your next summer vacation. Wrapping up our Copenhagen trip. Jose Duran is an avid traveler who blogs about his trips around the globe. And while getting there can be half the fun, sometimes traveling by air is no fun at all. I was in San Francisco. I had the last flight, the red eye, back to New York. And that flight ended up being canceled. And that created a whole cascade of events that spiraled out of control, really. Consumer Reports surveyed over 17,000 of its members and about nearly 33,000 flights asking about everything from ease of check-in to delays, cleanliness and price. The airline with a top overall satisfaction score for economy travel was Hawaiian Airlines. The big three, Delta, United and American, were in the middle and Frontier Airlines was at the bottom of the list. And it's no surprise that the members who took business or first class flights were more satisfied than those who flew coach, where travelers top gripe related to airline seats. 26% of our members in coach uh, reported either being very uncomfortable, uh, booking the wrong seat, or not able to sit with family. And 20% of travelers had gripes related to flight schedules, things like delays, reschedules, and cancellations. Yet most people surveyed did not formally complain to the airline. Whatever your air travel issues, it's important to lock complaints with the airline while you are still at the airport. If you are stranded, you may be owed meals or a hotel room or even money if you are bumped from your flight. You can visit the Department of Transportation's Aviation Consumer Protection website for a list of what each airline offers in the event of a controllable delay or cancellation. Hawaiian and Breeze Airways were both rated excellent for cabin cleanliness, less so for Frontier Airlines, which rated subpar. I'm Susan Hogan, News 4. Susan will continue her summer travel series tomorrow. She's got a consumer alert on fake travel sites you don't want to miss. All right, now if you thought, man, this is the hottest it's been in a long time, you are right. It turns out yesterday was the hottest day on Earth since at least 1979, with the global average temperature reaching 62.92 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is according to the U.S. National Centers for Environmental Prediction. Some scientists say that they believe that July 4th may have been one of the hottest days on Earth in around 125,000 years. Now, the last time the record was broken was just Monday when the average global temperature was 62.62 degrees Fahrenheit. The record-breaking temperature can partly be explained by climate change causing the world to heat up. Scientists also expect over the next few months for us to have more days of record-breaking heat. That's due to the return of El Nino after a four-year hiatus, so we are on a trend. Now, to cool off from this heat, most of us like to spend time by the water during the summer. 
But before your family heads to the pool or to the beach, take some time to think about safety. Erica Gonzalez now working for you with some tips. So there's many reasons to learn to swim and be comfortable in the water. It's fun, it's engaging, it's rehabilitative. It can also be dangerous, so pay attention to safety risks, even in the shallow water. Experts say a child can drown in as little as six inches of water. Every day in the United States, 11 people drown. And within that group, uh, ages one to four, it's actually the leading cause of death for children. William Ramos is a swimming expert and member of the American Red Cross Scientific Advisory Council. Ramos stresses the importance of always assigning an adult to be the designated water watcher. It's really almost lifeguard-like, so it needs to be supervision that is dedicated, uninterrupted, and constant. This is especially important when there aren't physical barriers to prevent a young child from wandering into the pool when others might be distracted. So checking those barriers, making sure they're adequate height, uh, making sure that locks on gates uh, are working. Ramos also says selecting the right swimming lessons can add a layer of protection. Look for one that, one, tries to get your child or attempts to get the child to a level that we call water competency. That's a point where we think people have enough uh, skill to save themselves if they found themselves in trouble. And when it comes to personal flotation devices, make sure it's the right size and it has a label like this, showing that it is Coast Guard approved. All right, thank you, Erica. And a warning before you put those swim lessons to use at the beach. There's been an uptick in shark attacks in recent weeks, and that includes over the holiday weekend. More sightings were reported off the coast of Long Island near New York City and in Florida. In New York, there were five attacks in two days, including three just yesterday. A shark bit a man on the knee and another man on the hand. A shark bit a woman in the thigh. They're all expected to be OK. Good news there. There were also shark sightings in Florida. You see this hammerhead? This was spotted near Miami. No one was hurt, fortunately, again, but people say that they're being cautious out there, just not worried. We don't go out too far because I know they're coming close, but I think you have to respect the ocean, but just know that stuff is out there. Experts say unprovoked shark attacks are pretty rare. They happen about 74 times a year, which is pretty minimal when you consider the millions of people swimming in the waters at any one time. Experts say that shark attacks usually happen if sharks see a school of fish and they just think that you happen to be one of them. Coming up, take a trip through history without leaving the DMV. News 4's Megan McGrath shows us the new attraction that now has a permanent home along the waterfront. Old Town Alexandria has always been known for its deep history and its beauty. And now there is a brand new attraction there along the waterfront, the Tall Ship Providence. News 4's Megan McGrath explains how you can climb aboard and be transported back in time in the scene. Sign your name to join the Continental Navy. Before you can board the tall ship Providence, you have to join the Continental Navy. A signature is all that's required. Hey, congratulations on making your mark. Then you're assigned a job. I'm a Marine. I act as the ship's infantry in times of combat. Nestled along the Potomac River in Old Town, Providence is a floating piece of history. Her most famous captain, John Paul Jones, gives visitors the tour. Now, if you're to board the ship and be my crew, you need to know a wee bit about what she does. Explore the deck, see the captain's living quarters, and go down into the hold. Because behind those doors is all of our gunpowder stores. You'll learn about the ship's storied past. She was a whaler, merchant ship. And, and a privateer. And then in 1776, she did become the first um, vessel authorized by the Continental Congress for the Continental Navy. Providence fought in the American Revolution until 1779, when she was burned by her own crew to avoid capture by the British. The ship you see today is a fully working replica. On weekends, visitors can actually sail on board Providence. You get to see the whole ship and stuff. like. Inside and downside. What was your favorite part? Probably the down downstairs. It's cool. You'll also find a maritime museum built on a floating dock. The actual buildings and structure are designed to 
kind of an inspiration from a 1700s painting from Jamestown. But the entire thing is floating. It actually moves up and down with the tide. And this weekend is a great time to visit. It's Alexandria's 274th birthday. There will be tours of Providence all day long. And then the city of Alexandria is putting on a big fireworks show at night. In Alexandria, Megan McGrath, News 4. All right, looks like fun. Meantime, back on land, Beyonce fans hoping to see the Queen Bee in Pittsburgh have to make some new plans now. The August 3rd show has been canceled due to logistical and scheduling issues. Fans are going to be refunded at their point of purchase. This was the scheduled stop before Beyonce's Renaissance Tour makes its way to FedEx Field on August 5th and 6th. Those shows here not affected. We'll keep it, hope it stays that way. I'll take a look at this. Taylor Swift fans in Missouri want to make sure that the music icon feels welcomed in their state. That's why the company Precision Mazes completed this piece of art in a local field. A farmer with the company actually owns this land and donated the 22 acres to the project. And uh, we hear he completed it with his own time and his own money. Swift will be performing at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri this Friday and Saturday. The two concerts are in, anticipated to draw more than 100,000. That's going to do it for the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us on this day after the 4th of July. I'm Leon Harris. Hope to see you back here tomorrow. So stay safe and stay cool until then. We'll see you.